Hey everybody, it's Grandmaster Ben Feingold here with another recap from round four. This is the game Richard Report versus Hikaru Nakamura. Let's get to the game. They played a Berlin. Shocking, shocking a Berlin. And here, Report played Bishop takes C6, DC. We've seen this already. Castles, I think we haven't seen Castles yet. I think Knight BD2 was played by, what, Fabi when he beat uh, Naka? Yeah. Okay, so Castles, Bishop D6, Bishop G5. The second bishop g5 of the day. h6, bishop h4, g5, rar, bishop g3. Now in this position, <clears throat> grandmasters always play queen e7, defending their e-pawn. And Naka's like, defend my e-pawn? I dare you to take it. I double dare you. Do they speak English and take the e-pawn? Bishop e6. Probably a novelty. And reports started thinking... If you take the pawn, let's say with the knight, for example, then put it in h, h5, threatening h4. And the engine says black is fine with this pawn sacrifice. So instead he played queen d2, which is engine recommended. The idea is I don't want you to play h5, I'll take that. And I want to play queen c3 and put pressure on your pawn here. Naka played knight d7. Report played d4, and this is all recommended by the engine. Queen d2, d4, put pressure here. Um, Naka played f6, of course, which is what black always does in this structure. Queen c3 threatening the e-pawn, and there's no real good way to defend it, so he has to take queen e7, giving up his two bishops. On the other hand, this position, slightly better for white. White has a better pawn structure, but white's pieces are still on the back row. So white has to get his pieces out. Instead, he played queen b3, also good. Knight c5, defending his b-pawn and his queen. And they got to this ending where the engine says white's a little bit better, but probably should be a draw, like most Berlin endgames. Nakamura decided to gain space on the king's side with h5. I thought he was going to play some kind of h4 and knight f4, but he decided to play g4, to play knight g5 and put pressure on the e-pawn. Interesting way of playing. Rook d2, doubling up on the bubble up. They traded rooks on the d-file. Knight to g5, attacking the e-pawn. Although, take the e-pawn now, rook e2 is good. So white just played knight a5 and said, ha ha, I'm attacking your pawn. And if you move your pawn, I'll take this pawn with check. And black doesn't want to play rook b8. So black just ignored that and played h4. Because if you play knight takes b7, I have rook b8, and here comes my rook. My rook is super aggressive. So he played rook to d3. c5 was played. That way you can play b6 and not hang your pawn on c6. Again, we could take this, and we could take on c5. But after rook takes, black is actually better. Black's down a pawn, but he's threatening rook takes a2, rook takes c2, and rook b1 with checkmate. The engine actually way prefers black here. So he didn't do that. He played h3, getting some luft. No more back rank mates. They traded b6, knight c6 check. Knight takes a7. Here comes the black rook. And white wins a pawn, but black's activity with his rook, with his knight on g5, there's really no winning chances for white. The engine wants to play king f7, it says king F e5 is okay after thinking a while. The reason king e5 could be worse than king f7, it's not, is because after knight d5, we're threatening f4 check, winning a piece. Rook check was played, followed by knight e6. Why did he do that? He wants to play king takes e4, but if you play king takes e4 here, knight c3 check wins the rook. No king takes e4, losing your rook. And... <clears throat> He's not worried about knight takes b6 because now we have knight f4 check. Knight takes b6, knight f4 forking the king and rook. If we go back a move, you might say, wait a minute. Instead of walking into that fork, let's play king h2. Now knight e6, knight f4 is in check. King h2 undefends the f-pawn. So now when I take this, your f-pawn is attacked and just all the pawns are coming off the board just to draw. So he did play king g2, knight e6. C4 defending his knight, rook e1, and even though white's a pawn ahead, he just has no winning chances. He can't play knight takes b6 because of the aforementioned knight f4 check. 
the E pawn is a goner. This pawn is weak. This pawn is all the pawns are weak. Black's king is excellent. Knight takes E3 gives Black the advantage after King E4. So they just traded all the pawns off. No more pawns on the board equals draw. And they traded everything. And the players agreed to a draw, even though both sides could win, except for one thing. So a really well-played game by Nakamura. He was slightly worse. He defended accurately. And he drew the game without any real difficulty. A very well-played game. I would say this round is one of the best-played rounds of the tournament. Uh, lots, of, lots of accuracy, lots of great play, and lots of good results. Thanks for watching the recap of this game from round four between Report and Nakamura. You can watch all of our recaps on YouTube, and you can watch live on Twitch at twitch.tv slash GM Benjamin Feingold. Bye, everybody.